What's going on, everybody? Well, we're out here today with the first run of this creation here. This is uh, Gapra 2.0. Um, I've had to redo a few things, uh, getting ready for Axial Fest here next month. Uh, I had to get rid of all the element parts, unfortunately. So this is what I came up with. Um, get rid of that thing. So from the outside, it doesn't look a whole lot different other than wheels and tires. But underneath is where, uh, where things have happened here. Um, I had to get rid of the element frame, the skid, and the transmission. So what I've done is uh, I went with a 10-2 uh, carbon fiber flat rail kit, just a cheap Enjora brand. Um, and then I got a 10-2 aluminum skid and I'm not sure if this is a 10-2 or an original SCX-10 transmission. Uh, it's been laying around in my parts bin for some years now. Um, I think that that's all that I've had to add. Still got the Capra axles and still running the same uh, 21 turn homes and the ESC 70. So in order to make this whole situation work, um, like I've never put a flat rail kit together or an angled skid frame or a motor forward or skid forward, whatever you want to call it. So this was an interesting ordeal here. Being that that skid is so far forward, um, drive shafts had to be, um, we'll just call it MacGyvered. So this front drive shaft is super short along with the links. Um, I actually had to cut down a couple uh, drive shafts and kind of finagle those together. Uh, that thing's only a couple inches long at most. Um, the links up front were also kind of weird. The ones that came with this kit, they were actually, they had an S bend on them and they wanted you to mount them on the outside of the frame rails, which I do not understand. That seems incredibly stupid to me because if I was running anything other than these capper axles, uh, tire would have been rubbing on them if they were on the outside. So I ended up in the parts bin. I don't know if I can get a good shot of those or not. Um, but I actually, they'd be the top links up front. Those were actually uh, from a rustler or a bandit or a slash. Uh, I can't remember. It tracks this links either way. Um, so that worked out pretty well. The rear drive shaft, I had to cut apart three or four drive shaft pieces and it it was i i don't even have words for what happened here but it works um it's glued and on one side and kind of finagled together but it's not gonna fall out so it's all good um the links that came with it actually worked really well for the rear so i didn't have to do anything there um yeah, I think that that might be about it 
as far as that goes. Um, even though everything is mounted so far forward on this chassis, it's still like my balance point was still about here uh, before I put the battery on it. Um, just because there's not a whole lot of room up here for electronics. So I ended up putting the battery directly on the servo. Um, we'll see how well that works out. It's just on there with Velcro. When the body's on, it shouldn't be able to come out, even if the Velcro comes undone. So hopefully that'll be all right. Uh, still rocking the TRX4 shocks. They seem to be doing pretty well. Um, just got these Enjora deep dish wagon wheels. They got some pretty good offset to them. So this thing is super wide. Um, and I did end up flipping the ring and pinion around and the axles from front to rear. So, uh, I don't know the number, but I do know that I've got a pretty good amount of, uh, overdrive now. So, yeah. Oh, uh. Being that the front was so short and this has an angled skid on it, uh, I was having issues with, during compression, the spur gear was actually hitting the drive shaft. Um, so I re you can barely see it down in there, but I put some spacers on the uh, front bolts or the transmission mounts to the skid to kind of angle the front up and level it out. And I think I've got it to where it's clearing completely. And I went ahead and put the spur cover back on there. Uh, I had to cut it out just so that it wasn't hitting the drive shaft as well. Um, but I think I got that resolved. I suppose we'll find out. Just on the drive up here. I can say I completely forgot how loud these three gear transmissions are. It's been a while since I've run one, so she's a noisy one. We'll say that much. We're going to give her a lightweight test run around the pit here and see how it does and see what breaks. And we will go from there. So, after switching over to this new chassis setup, I did unfortunately have to drill four new body pole or body holes. Um, that sucks. I had just got this thing put together on the other chassis, but I was afraid that I was going to have to cut the body up a lot. Most of the LCG builds that you see, they don't have much of the body left. But I got pretty lucky, and all I had to do was notch out the uh, where the frame rails are on the front. And since the capper axles are so wide, and the wide offset wheels, um, everything clears. I don't have any rubbing at all that I can tell so far. So I actually get to keep the body in, intact. The only thing that I'm not real fond of at the moment is um, I've got the the body down as far as I can get it uh, without chopping up the inside of the bed, but there's still pretty good rake to the body. So, uh, we'll see how long that stays or if I end up chopping it up to lower it down and level everything out. The other kind of oddball situation is, for some reason, this uh, new setup kind of extended the, the wheelbase out, 
so my front axle is sitting way out front, which is good for clearance. Since I don't do any scale comps, I don't think it's going to matter. It just looks a little juicy. I will say that the uh, these crawler tires that I got here, uh, they're just running the factory foams in them right now. Um, I haven't got a set of dual stages for them yet, so they're going to be uh, quite a bit too soft for what I need. Uh, the ones on the rear, I actually got in a package deal down at Beat the Creek, so they're used. Still in pretty decent shape, um, but the ones on the front are new. Got that good low speed, that's for sure. Screwed that line up. I don't know if I'll be able to save this one or not. spot to be in right here. Hopefully it's wide enough that it won't come on over. I honestly don't think I've ever saved one in that spot. They always take a tumble there definitely the widest uh, widest crawler that I've had that's for sure and I still haven't still haven't cleaned this section up yet since the critters dug out their hole and kind of filled in my line here Lost all traction on that side of it anyway. Man, I've got to have at least 20-25% overdrive in this thing. I haven't, like I said, I'm not good with math, so I haven't done the math on all the gearing, but... This has definitely got a lot more overdrive than the Ecto does, that's for sure. Look down at the camera for a minute. Let's uh, zoom out here so I don't gotta pay as close attention to that. Oh, buddy. Got enough to suck the front back over. Almost. Pretty good for a first run. I am very happy with that. If this thing will descend right here as well as it just climbed up that, I'll say that that is the uh, best first run of anything I've put together before.
think that one was more on me than anything. between these critters digging their dens out and the cows stomping up through here. Things are getting tore up bad this spring. Something else I'm on the fence about. Uh, I ended up putting the sliders on here and uh, kind of bent them up at an angle to kind of hold the body in. So I didn't want to trim a whole bunch out of the bottom of the body there, but I also didn't want it getting tore up on the rocks. So. I've seen them get hung up on a few things so far, so I may end up having to trim the, or take the sliders off and then trim the body out. If it's gonna hold me up, I, I'm gonna have to do something about it. This thing is awesome. cows destroyed one of my obstacles last week I was on the fence about whether I was gonna keep this one or not so I guess they made that decision for me unfortunately that was a decent little climb too wide for this thing now. Hanging off both sides. Too wide for the teeter totter, too. Wow, I 
actually had enough overdrive to make that in one turn. thing keeps it up it's gonna it's gonna be fighting for favorite in the fleet We'll see how this goes. I kind of got this little section here set up. I did that with the Ecto and it's real narrow. Let's see if I get hung up here. Well, cleared that, no problem. is just wide enough to get hung up on that rock right there. Ooh. Got enough breakover angle, I don't have to bump that little crest to get over the hump. Just here. This is going pretty well. Hopefully it continues. Damn. Got bugs all over the place. Getting covered in ants. Sorry if I'm waving the camera around. Got ants all over me. Might be too soft to hold this one. Yep. Ugh. That thing is dangerous. We'll take a different route until I get some better foams in these tires.
across. Mm. It's getting dangerous up here. Down in a hole. stick. Okay, so right here is a prime example. Let's see if I can get you down in there. That slider, the front of it's hitting right on this rock. And I believe if it wasn't for that slider and I trimmed the body up a little bit, I feel like that would probably clear. But instead, it's got me in uh, quite the little pickle here. Got a good drag break. That's good. Let's see what kind of turn radius this thing's got. I'll go for a little bit of an S hook here. See if it'll make it in one shot. Or get hung up on the point. <laughs> Another thing that I may end up having to do is trim out a good bit of this uh, tailgate area here. It hangs over a good bit past the uh, rear cross member frame area. Like that. That's just gonna end up destroying this body at some point. that one. my rear diff. There we go. That's some pretty good flex there. I think all four tires are actually still touching. I think that's about as much flex as I can get away with without uh, losing stability.
think I'm gonna try something that I've tried with the Ecto more times than I can count, but never made it. So we're gonna come up this steep little fucker here and try to transition onto the top here. Now, as you can see, there ain't a whole lot of contact patch between the two. And on this side of the top piece, it is undercut like crazy. So, I don't have any idea if this is gonna work, but we're gonna give it a shot anyways. say that I've never gotten more than one tire up on it before so just gonna fall but I think I can get this that will be a first for the pit and I will say that this was these pieces of concrete did not get set up intentionally for a climb uh, they just kind of fell that way when the truck dropped them off is getting into the rock really bad but we did it man this thing is freaking sweet get rid of those sliders and trim the body up unfortunately that's hanging me up more than anything I really wanted to keep as much body as I possibly could but I just don't think that's going to be doable on this one
now I'm just gonna get ridiculous with it. This pile, literally nothing has been touched. It got dumped off last week. So I have set up zero pieces of concrete for any kind of a line. I don't know if I'll be able to get anything here or not. something here I don't want this falling last thing I need is for this truck to get crushed by a piece of concrete and break something There's going to be any getting off of it over here. So, I guess that this is pretty much my only option. I wasn't expecting anything spectacular over here. Well, I might be able to come up and around. Probably going to bottom out on the belly or on the skids quite a bit if I can even keep it up on top here Got me. Ooh. Peeled my body out. It was worth it. We made it. Alright. One more little test obstacle, and I think we'll call this a successful run. successful if it sticks it I guess and nailed it 
Wouldn't have expected anything less. Would you just look at it? Mm. Well, I'd say that that was a su successful run. Blah. Can't talk. Um, I'm very happy with how this thing has turned out so far. Um, gonna have to go back and do some tweaking and some cutting on the body and take the sliders off and see what I can come up with there. I really don't want to cut any more than I absolutely have to though. But we'll see how it goes. Well, I thank you for watching and uh, hope you enjoyed. We'll catch you in the next one. Later.